today, let's discuss about Thevenin's theorem. Other people read this as Thevenin. So it's up to you if you want to read it as Thevenin or Thevenin. Uh, this one is a name of a person. So what is Thevenin's theorem? So it says that a linear circuit can be represented by a single voltage source in series with the corresponding equivalent resistance of that linear circuit. So here, okay, we have the linear circuit, okay, and we have points A and B. Okay, the open circuit voltage, okay, we measure at points A and B is called the Thevenin voltage. Okay. So, the linear circuit can be represented by a single voltage source in series with the equivalent resistance. Okay? So, the equivalent resistance is called the Thevenin resistance. Okay? The equivalent voltage source is called the Thevenin voltage. Okay? So, at the other side of points A and B, other side of the circuit, we have the load resistance. Okay? So... Hmm, open circuit voltage, that is our Thevenin voltage. Okay, for the example, let us solve for Thevenin voltage and Thevenin resistance at points A and B. At these points, what is the Thevenin voltage? What is the Thevenin resistance? Hmm. Okay, Sasuke. Remember this, okay? In Thevenin, Okay, the circuit equivalent is a voltage source, which is in series with the equivalent resistance. Always remember Thevenin, voltage source, series equivalent resistance. Okay, Sasuke, let's move on. Okay, Sasuke, Sasuke. Okay, I know it is sad, Sasuke, but we need to move on. So we can solve for the Thevenin resistance. Okay, in getting the Thevenin resistance, what we do is we turn off all the independent sources, okay, just like this one. So the voltage source, when turned off, it becomes a short circuit or just a wire. And then for the current source, when it is turned off, it's an open circuit, okay? So simplifying further, so we have this uh, equivalent network so we have these 4 ohms 12 ohms they are in parallel and 4 and 12 ohms they are in series with 1 ohm okay so let's get the resistance at points a and b and that is our Thevenin resistance so we have 4 in parallel with 12 ohms so 4 times 12 over 4 plus 12 okay and the equivalent resistance of these two in series with 1 ohm, okay, plus 1 ohm. So, RTH or Thevenin resistance is equal to 4 ohms, okay? So, that is our Thevenin resistance. Now, let's move on to the Thevenin voltage. So, the Thevenin voltage is the open circuit voltage at points A and B. So, First, we need to turn on all independent sources, okay? So, we need to have this one again, this one again. And the method of choice that I wanted to use in solving for the Thevenin voltage is mesh analysis, okay? Uh, you can use other uh, things you have learned already, but for me, it's easier to use mesh analysis. Since we have two meshes here, this is open, so we don't have another mesh, right? Open from points A and B. So current will not flow at this loop. Actually, it doesn't have a loop because this is open. So we only have two meshes. So the steps are solve for the mesh currents, okay? Then solve for the open circuit voltage, okay? Hmm, hmm, hmm. Next. Okay, let's proceed with mesh analysis for mesh 1 and mesh 2. 
for mesh one here, this one. So we have thirty two equal to uh -huh, four plus twelve times I one minus this common resistance twelve ohms times I two, right? Okay. So simplifying further, we have thirty two equal to sixteen I one minus twelve I two. Then Simplifying further, okay, you can also simplify, you can have this one, but you can do this also. 8 is equal to 4i1 minus 3i2. And that is your first equation. Okay. Mm -hmm. Next, for mesh 2, we have, this is your mesh 2. As you can see here, we have a current source, 2 amperes. For mesh analysis involving current sources, so it can fall under case 1 or case 2. In this case, it is under case 1. So when you say case 1, the current source is affecting only one mesh. So as you can see here, this current source is only affecting mesh 2, this one. Okay, it's not common to a, uh, the first mesh and the second mesh, only this one mesh. So, this will fall under case 1. So, if it's case 1, so automatically the magnitude is equal to the value of the current source. So, it's 2 amperes. But the direction, this one is going this way. Your current direction is going this way. So, it's negative 2 amperes. Okay. So, now you have a value for I2. We can just substitute I2 to get I1. So this is the equation 1, right? 8 is equal to 4I1 minus 3I2. So substituting negative 2. Okay. So it's 8 equal to 4I1 plus 6. Then transposing 6, we have 8 minus 6 equal to 4I1. Then 2 equal to 4I1. I1 is equal to 1 half or 0.5 amperes. So we have I1, 0.5 amperes, and I2 with negative 2 amperes. Okay, But we are looking for the Thevenin voltage. So now we know what is the value of I1 and I2. We already know the current. Okay, But we need to know the open circuit voltage. So, okay. We can move this probe positive and negative negative probe here since they are in parallel this resistance doesn't have any current flowing through it okay so it's as if that this is just a wire so you can move point a and b here move it here okay it's as if you're measuring at these points and then okay uh we can measure since they are in parallel so we can just get the voltage across 12 ohms. Okay, voltage across 12 ohms is equal to the 7 in voltage. Actually, you can also have it this way. The voltage at this uh, branches. So, for with this 4 ohms and 32 volts. Actually, you can proceed with doing KVL to get the 7 in voltage. But I prefer to just get the voltage at 12 ohms. Okay, it's simpler. So, 7 in voltage can be measured across 12 ohms by okay, multiplying 12 ohms with the current. So, the current that flows through 12 ohms is I1 minus I2. Why is it I1 minus I2? So, the direction or the polarity okay, of VTH, so the polarity here is positive and negative. So the current will flow from this higher potential going to lower potential. So our I1 flows through here, right? In this way, in this manner. So it follows the polarity of our Thevenin voltage while I2 flows through from this point going up. So it contradicts the polarity of the Thevenin voltage. Okay, So it's negative. Next, 
let's substitute the values. We have 12 ohms times 0.5 amperes, I1, minus negative 2 amperes, which is our I2. So VTH is equal to 12 times 2.5 equal to 30 volts. So VTH is 30 volts. Okay, so now this circuit, which looks a bit hmm, complex, can be expressed in a single voltage source in series with a single resistance or the equivalent resistance. So you can say that the equivalent resistance of this circuit in the left side of points A and B is just equal to 4 ohms. And the equivalent voltage source of this circuit 3 at the left side of points A and B is just equal to 30 volts. Okay? So that is your Thevenin circuit equivalent. VTH of 30 volts, RTH of 4 ohms. That's it.